Hi everyone, my name is Sip from the Azure Virtual WAN team, and today I'll be showing you how to set up remote user connectivity using Azure Virtual WAN. So there's several prerequisites that we need to go over before we can get started. First of all, you need to have an Azure subscription. If you don't have one, you can always create a free account. You also want to have a resource group, and in that resource group, you want to have deployed a virtual network that you would like to connect to. Your virtual network must not have any existing virtual network gateways. And if there are any existing gateways for VPN or express route, you must remove all these gateways before proceeding. So now that we have all those prerequisites out of the way, first what we want to do is create a virtual WAN. So I'll go up here to the search bar, type in virtual WAN, and then click here under services for virtual WANs. And then I'll hit here plus create. The subscription is correct. The resource group, I'll go to my desired resource group. Resource group location, I'll choose the location I want these resources to be in. And then the name, I will say YouTube Remote User VWAN. Basic only allows for site to site connections and that's for branch connectivity. So I'm going to say standard to also allow for this remote user connectivity with point to site connections. And then I'm going to hit review plus create. It might take several seconds for validation to pass and then I'll click create in order to actually deploy this resource. Okay, looks like the virtual WAN is finished deploying. So I'm going to click here to go to resource. And now that I've entered the virtual WAN resource, I am going to create a user VPN configuration. So here on the left hand side, I'm going to click on user VPN configurations and here click plus create user VPN config. These two fields are automatically pre-populated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and say, for the name, YouTube underscore remote score user config. We offer these VPN protocols. OpenVPN is open source. IKEV2 is partially developed by Microsoft. OpenVPN does allow for multiple authentication protocols and also allows for automatic route learning and advertisement through dynamic BGP. So then I will click next to Azure certificate. And we will be using an Azure certificate as our authentication method for today. And in order to do so, we'll be using a process to create a self-signed REIT certificate. But if you already have a certificate issued by a certificate authority, then feel free to use that certificate. In order to create a self-signed REIT certificate, I'll be using the steps in this document over here, and I'll paste a link to this article in the description. So first, I'm going to copy this PowerShell command and then go to PowerShell. And then I'm going to control V. I'm going to go to the subject here and then I'm going to edit the subject name. So I'll call this YouTube root search one. And hit enter. And that should create the self signed research certificate. And then if I scroll down in this document, this will actually create the child certificate. So I'll copy this. And then I'm going to go down to PowerShell, Control V. And again, I'm going to edit the name to something that I will remember for my purposes. So I will say YouTube child search one and hit enter and it looks like that client certificate was also created now that the client certificate is created what we're going to need to do is export the root certificate public key so i'm going to go to my search over here and say manage user certificates and then i'll hit enter and then here i'm going to go under personal certificates and then here I see my YouTube child cert and my YouTube root cert. So I'm going to click on YouTube root cert, right click all tasks, 
and then say export. And then I'm going to say next. I do not want to export the private key. For the format, I actually do want the second option, which is base64 encoded. And then I'll click next. And then I will browse to where I want to export that certificate. So if this folder looks good to me, I'll say YouTube root cert one. Click save. Next. Finish. Looks like that export was successful. Next, what I'll do is actually export the client certificate because even though the client certificate is automatically installed on this computer, I will actually be connecting to my private resources in Azure through my development virtual machine. And so I want to export this client certificate onto that VM. And so in order to do so, I'll also need to follow similar steps to export the client certificate. So what I'll do is I'll go to YouTube child search one corresponding to the client certificate. I'll go to all tasks, export, next. Here, I actually do want to export the private key, so I'll click yes here, and then I'll say next. And then for personal information exchange, the first option, include all certificates in the path if possible and enable certificate privacy, both look good. So I'll click next. I'll put in a password to protect this private key. Click next, and then I'm going to browse to where I want to actually export the child certificate. And click save, next, and then finish. Looks like the export was successful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File Explorer, go to where I have that certificate stored, and then I am going to simply copy that and then go to my virtual machine. Go to documents. And then I will simply paste this child certificate here. And then I'll double click on it. Install for current user. I do want to allow this app to make changes. This file looks good the password that i just put in include all extended properties that looks good next and then finish it looks like i've successfully imported that client certificate okay so now I'll leave my vm that's actually running on my laptop and then i will go back to azure portal and here I need the root certificate name and the public certificate data. So in order to do so, I go back to my root certificate stored on my file explorer. I will right click, I'll say open with notepad. And then after I open with notepad, I can actually see this data. So starting actually from the second line and then going all the way to the second to last line. So leaving that first line and last line alone. And then pasting that in public certificate data. And then for root cert name, this is basically what you put in a PowerShell. So YouTube root cert one is what I put in. So I'll control C that and then control V. And then I can go next to radius authentication. We won't be using radius authentication or Azure Active Directory. So I'll say no for both of those. And then create this user VPN configuration. It might take several seconds for that to finish being created. As you can see, the hub and address pool are unassigned. So what we're going to do is on, on this left-hand side, go to hubs. We're going to create a new hub. And then in this new hub, we'll create the point to site gateway. So for region, I'm going to put West US2. Name, I'll say YouTube underscore remote underscore user underscore hub. Hub private address space. I need to make sure this doesn't overlap with my virtual network address space. And then next is site to site gateway. We won't be creating a site to site VPN gateway, but we will be creating a point to site user VPN gateway. So I'll say yes here. For gateway scale units, for my purposes, I'll simply say one scale unit, but you can automatically put more if you'd like. 
point to site configuration, I'll put the configuration that we just created. For routing preference, we can either go via the Microsoft network or internet. I'll put an uh, article in the description about the difference between these two options, which are cold potato and hot potato routing. And then here, I'd like to actually highlight a new feature where we can actually use a radius server that is connected to a remote hub or that is on premises. For our purposes, we don't need to enable this feature because we are using certificate authentication as opposed to radius authentication. But if we were using radius authentication, this would be an option. For my client address pool, I need to make sure this doesn't overlap with my hub address space or my virtual network address space. And then I don't need a custom DNS server, so I'll go next to express route. No, I don't want to create an express route gateway. And then I'll go to review and create. And this whole process will take about half an hour. We see the warning over here. So I will resume this process in about half an hour. So it looks like our virtual hub and our point to site gateway has been deployed. If I go to notifications here, it looks like it took about 49 minutes. So please expect anywhere between half an hour to an hour for this deployment to succeed. I'm going to click go to resource over here and here I'm now entered into the virtual hub. And what I want to do now is actually download the user VPN profile. So in order to do so, I need to go back to my resource group. And then I'm going to go to my virtual LAN resource. I'm going to go on this left hand side, go to user VPN configurations. And then here what will pop up is the user VPN configuration I created, and it should be assigned to the hub I created with the designated address pool. And here I can see that that all looks successfully completed. So I'm going to click on this user VPN configuration and then download the virtual WAN user VPN profile. So click for authentication protocol, EAP TLS, and then generate and download that profile. All right, so it looks like it was downloaded. Before I actually install that VPN profile on my virtual machine, what I'm going to do is create a connection between my hub and the virtual network. So here on the left hand side, I'm going to go to virtual network connections. Say OK. Here I'm going to say add connection. We'll call this VNet1 connection for hub. We'll put in the hub that we have created. Subscription looks good resource group, resource group that we've created, and then the one virtual network that we have created. I don't want to propagate to none. I actually want to associate to the default route table and propagate to the default route table to ensure connectivity. And for now, I'm not going to propagate to any specific labels or add any static routes that isn't needed for our connectivity purposes. And then I will click create. OK, so it looks like we've successfully added our virtual network connection between our hub and the virtual network that we created. So now what we'll do is finish the last step of this process, which is downloading that VPN profile onto our virtual machine. So I'll go to downloads, I'll click here, and I'll copy this. And then I'm going to go to my virtual machine. And then paste that. I'm going to extract all. And then I'm going to go to Azure VPN. And then here there will be an XML document. And in order to actually create a VPN connection, I need to install the Azure VPN client. So I'm going to go to the Microsoft Store. And then in search, I'm going to say Azure VPN client. Click on Azure VPN client. And then I'll say get. And we'll just wait for that to finish downloading. All right, so it finished downloading. I'll click open. 
OK, so in order to add the VPN connection, I'm going to click on this plus sign. I'm going to click import. I am going to go to my VPN profile folder, go to Azure VPN, and then I'm going to click on this XML file, and it's going to pre-populate all those fields. And then I'm simply going to click Save. And it's going to create that VPN connection. And if I click connect, it's going to let me actually connect to that user VPN gateway, thus enabling me to achieve remote user connectivity with Azure Virtual WAN.